Hey, anyway, this is Jackie K, and welcome for this week's edition of the Pokemon Go Fireside Chat. I'm gonna apologize in advance, because this is gonna be a pretty short stream, podcast in general. There's a lot of people, for those of you who are not in the general gaming community, this time of year, an event called Extra Life goes on where various people stream on Twitch to raise money for a charity. Not, like, I know one group is streaming for their local children's hospital. I forget what other charities are, other people are raising money for. But it's a very good cause. Lots of entertaining content. I do want to get back to it, and I feel kind of bad take, potentially taking away from people's support. So if it seems like I'm skimming through the news quicker than usual, that is why I'm hoping to do like an extra audio podcast recording in the middle of the week to flesh out some of the things that I skim over. With that said, let's get right into it. First thing I want to do is mention some things that I forgot about on last week's podcast, including some details relating to Milt 10 that we got, and how... The next community day is this Saturday already. Quicker thing out of the way first. Cyndaquil community day will be at your typical community day time frame for me in particular. That is 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, November 10th. Oh, shoot, I forgot to even look up what the details were. I believe it's a little bit different where instead of getting triple of either Stardust or Experience, we'll be getting double of both of them for each of our catches. I've heard something going back and forth on if lore modules are the three hour lore modules going to be a thing still, but I'm pretty sure that's still the case. And the other thing. It is with Mel 10. A little while ago, we got the last Professor Willow versus Professor Willow. Wait, am I really, was I really going to say Professor Willow versus Professor Oak? Was that a word? It says words, I should say, that was really going to come out of my mouth? I guess so. No, Professor Oak and Willow. Their little interactions. We'll discover that when Moss and Melt 10 get together, they evolve into a new Pokemon, Mel Metal. Specifically noted to be the first mythical Pokemon evolution. We've had some weird stuff in the years in Pokemon. We've had legendaries that evolve into. Legendaries evolve. We've had legendaries that breed. But we never had a mythical Pokemon fall into this category. I mean, I consider them so similar that it's not that being noteworthy. But most of the community does make that distinction, so I figure I'd at least point it out. And the thing that I wish I had more time to talk about, but unfortunately we'll have to save for another time, is my feelings have came out when we've learned a bit more about exactly how we're getting this mill metal. So here's the thing. It requires 400 candies to evolve the most candies a Pokemon has ever required for evolution in Pokemon Go. And I, just in case it's worth noting, you need to evolve it in Pokemon Go. You can't actually evolve it into the Let's Go game. And you're wondering how you would get Melton in the first place. Well, word is going around that there is going to be special field research for it. But I haven't read anything concrete. What we do know, and what will probably be required if you want to get enough candies to get Mel Metal, is you can get it through interaction between Pokemon Go and either Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee coming to the Switch. So, at the very least, 
It sounds like you're going to need to at least have a friend with Pokemon Let's Go, either version, in order to do this. And even if you do and can avoid buying the Switch game, you're still going to need to be a friend that you can hang out with very frequently because, oh well, boy, they certainly try to flesh this out to encourage you to actually buy the game as much as possible in order to pull this off. Which is a bit unfortunate because I was not planning on getting the Let's Go game. There are just too many other console video games that if I had the time to play, I want to put my attention on. And I'm a little hesitant to put down 60 bucks just to... Well, more after tax. Just to get one Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I want to say... Which is sad because I would like to say that I'm doing it for more than just getting that one Pokemon Pokemon Go. But with my current situation, that seems to be how it would be the case. But I'm getting into stuff that I was promising to save for later. As for how you actually get Mill Metal and that. First, in the Let's Go game, you have to get to a town called Fuchsia City. And then you get to access a new area called the uh, Pokemon Go Park. Some of you may recognize Fuchsia City as the town in the Pokemon Red and Blue games where you got to the Safari Zone. The main series games have had a tendency to replace the for, so, excuse me, replace the Safari Zone a lot of times, so I have my sinking suspicion that the Safari Zone is going to be replaced with this Pokemon Go Park. So once you get there, You'll have the option to transfer Pokemon into Pokemon Let's Go from your Pokemon Go game. And when you do that, you will get a special item that pretty much acts like a lure, no, an incense, specifically for Melton. I know this because from the screenshots, you see that it lasted for half an hour. And they show a bunch of Melton appearing, so they haven't specifically told us this, but I have a strong suspicion that you'll be able to run this incense for half an hour, catch Melton, and then you have to wait another week before you can use get another one of these special incense again. Yeah, you can only do this once per week per Pokemon Go account. You can link as many Pokemon Go accounts as you want to a single copy of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Hence my suggestion that if you don't want to buy a Switch Swift for this game, but have a friend that does have the game, that is an option to get your Meltens. However, if you do own Let's Go, there are other methods to help you get Melton candy besides just catching Melton. From the mechanics we've seen from Let's Go, seems like as you transfer them from Pokemon Go to Let's Go, you'll be able to play many games to earn more candy. So, in theory, you transfer any old Pokemon, get the Melton incense, catch as many Melton as you can, transfer those Melton to the Let's Go games, and not only will that get you extra candy, but you'll be able to earn more Melton candy from within... Pokemon Let's Go to help you with this evolution. It seems like the 400 candies thing is more so a barrier to try to keep you from just getting this Pokemon without getting the Let's Go game because it sounds like there's going to be plenty of options to get all the Melton candy you want, assuming you have both Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go. I could get more into my feelings on that, but I was trying to keep this podcast brief, and I've already spent too much time talking about this as is. Maybe for the midweek filler. As for this week's news that I really feel needs to be addressed, I forgot to mention that the Safari Zone over in Taiwan was going on this week, and with that, Pinsir's Shining Form has been releasing the game. 
and Pinsir themselves have actually increased in spawns the past couple days. They were all over the place today, Saturday, as I'm recording slash streaming this. And I got a strong feeling that they'll be around in equal frequency tomorrow, Sunday. If you're getting this on Monday, you probably already missed it. But I don't give up hope. Even though the sponsor Spencer, Pinsir will be, definitely be down by then. You will still have a, an opportunity to get the shiny, I believe. Oh, I know. The more questionable part is where you're going to find a pincer. It's definitely one of the more rare Pokemon. And another thing I wanted to note is with November, we got a new set of field research. And I've mentioned this before, but we've got the details of what we can get from the field research. I've probably already mentioned that Sheninja is the research breakthrough, and spoiler alert, it's a little anticlimactic. I You're not going to be using this for battle anytime soon, but you will want to do at least one for the next entry. As for other things I want to note, if you get a quest for Evolve 2 Pidgeys, you'll actually want to hold on to that because that'll get you a Caterpie. I know what you're saying. Jackie K, why the heck would I want a Caterpie? Well, dear viewer, if you were paying attention to last week's podcast, you would know that Caterpie Shine Form was released in celebration of the November field research. So this is a good way to assure that you're going to get at least a decent IV if the Pokemon ends up being shiny. The other field research you want to keep your eyes open for is the Catch 5 Bug Pokemon research. This gets you the Pokemon Nikita. Naturally, what am I doing just standing here? I could just show you the picture of it. This here is Nikita. Cute little guy. As you can see, he needs 50 candy to evolve into this guest. Both Nikita and this guest and Shininja were Generation 3 Pokemon. However, they have never been released into Pokemon Go. But now they are in the game. So you'll want to try to find as many of these field research as you possibly can. Because you'll have you'll, you won't need to make your buddy as often to walk around in that. Because you'll need at least 50 candy to evolve into the Sheninja. Or the Ninja Chess. Sheninja, my good friend, is this little guy. And um, you probably already see the questionable thing about it. But I'm going to try to save that for my experiences. And per usual, there's a new spin to form out. This one is form number 7 for those who differentiate them by the Pokedex form entries. It is another make three nice curve ball throws in a row. So if you come across that, be sure to do at least one for your spin to of the month. If you're looking for a more detailed list of the various field research you can get from different tasks, I would highly recommend checking your typical Pokemon Go sources. You can either use the Go Ranger app or check out sites like GoHub. And this is probably the thing I'm most disappointed that I have to skim through. But Adventure Week is officially out. It came out for level 40 players a couple days ago. And at this point, it's been rolled down to at least level 30 players. It may have been rolled down to an even lower level by this point. It does do everything we've hoped for. It keeps track of your steps even when you're not running the game. Even without an Apple Watch or Fitbit or other device. How it works is that it uses the either Google Fit for Android or Apple Fitness for iOS users, it uses that data right within your phone to keep track of your steps. So you don't even have to open up Pokemon Go to keep track of your steps if you sync that up. And it can include activities that normally wouldn't track steps in Pokemon Go, such as walking in place via a treadmill. And the rewards that you get from here are pretty basic, but they do get better 
as you get to the higher tiers. In fact, I could probably show you real quick. There's a five kilometer tier, and that'll just get you 20 Pokeballs. But once you walk 25 kilometers, you get 20 Pokeballs, 20 Great Balls, and one of the following. 5,000 Stardust, excuse me, or a 5 kilometer egg. Grant, you do have to have less than 9 eggs in your inventory in order to get a 5 kilometer egg from this fashion. So, if you want the egg, or more so don't want the egg, keep that in mind before, as you walk, because I can't see, I forget if you can actually choose one to redeem it, but point remains that you gotta keep it in mind. Excuse me, my voice is getting a bit ratchety there. And last, but certainly not least, if you manage to walk 50 kilometers in a single week, not only do you get 20 Pokeballs and 10 Great Balls, but you also get 5 Ultra Balls. In addition, you can get one of the following. Purely 1500 Stardust, or you could get a set of 5000 Stardust and a 10 kilometer egg. Like before, you have to have a free egg slot, so maybe if you know if you're going to walk 50 kilometers, just, make, just don't get an egg when you're redeeming the 25 kilometer one and wait until the 50 kilometer one. The next possibility that you could get, in addition to the balls, is a 10 kilometer egg, granted if you have a free egg slot, and a rare candy. And alternatively, you could just get 10,000 stardust and a single rare candy. You know, I mean, with how easy it is to get rare candies from raiding, I personally think they could have afforded to put a couple more rare candies into that 50 kilometer slot, but I'm not going to complain about free rare candy. And that looks like all there is to the adventure sync that I wrote down in my notes. Guess I could go over some of the things I did today. It's kind of hard because I don't know how to skim it down. A lot has happened. We've gotten a new set of field research. We've gotten a Gengar community day that I've went through already. You can tell from my bounty of Gengars. And what was I thinking? There's like, oh well, yeah, I also finally completed my field research. My special, my special research, I just say. I just have yet to redeem it. But yeah, while I was out raiding today, I finally found the last Pokestop that I have never spun before that I needed to complete the quest. So I'm on 3 3, and I figured, eh, I'll just wait until I'm running a lucky egg again to claim the experience. I know I don't need it, but if I gotta use these lucky eggs up that I get from bundles anyways, I might as well save it for when I pop one of those. But I guess I'll start with addressing the elephant in the room. The thing that's been hiding on my character screen, my new buddy. Yes, you're seeing this, right? A glorious purple bluish pincer. I know that's not as exciting as it normally is because I'm sponsored pincers and I'm pretty sure that maybe even the shiny rate has been up. But man, I wish I had the shock in my face when I was recording, or I wish I was recording so you could hear the shock on my face. But then I realized I did record a very similar sound that was really loud, and that makes me realize that it probably was a good idea that it didn't get recorded. <sighs> I gotta be, yeah, I love of you. The I there's basically two slots of the Gengar Ray Day. The first hour, and the last hour. And there's a lot of things that sucked about the first hour. Like the fact that... 
my game might as well have been busted. <laughs> Getting all these notifications that the game crashed when it didn't. Again, probably a venture sync. My throw's not being registered properly, like I would go whoop, spinning myself around and flick to do the Pokeball motion in that. And it doesn't show up properly, like sometimes the game will throw my Pokeball while I'm still spinning it for a curveball. Sometimes it'll just decide, hey, he's not holding the phone down anymore even though he is and just flat out drop my ball and sometimes it, it was just me sucking throwing the balls and it's usually good catching the raid bosses but in that first hour I did three Gengar raids and only caught one just for some reason I'm sure the issues I was having with my phone didn't help but Gengar is hard for me to throw at. I don't know why, but it just happened out of the blue. And of course I had to find out about that in the middle of the raid day. It was fantastic in the most sarcastic way I can express it. In addition though... The good thing was, unlike most raid days, that first hour slot, I walked the whole time. I did my walking, it was just the perfect temperature for me with what I had on my body. So it was nice and refreshing, and if I wasn't too busy screaming at the game for being a plug wad, messing me up, just being laggy in general, it would have been a great fantastic time. Thankfully. That was when I got to my Shining Pinster that you saw earlier on. Blue Pinch. The shiny sparkling purple bug. Blue Pinch. Almost lost him because my game was a butt. Blue Pinch. So here's how it went. We were waiting for people to do the last raid of my first hour. So I clicked on some, there's a lot of pincers spawning, so I just click on a couple. One of them was my shiny Houston pincer, and I was all hyped. So I just went to my recording device, hit record. That might be my first mistake, but something tells me it, there was more to it than that. Hit the record button, but it a berry. It was stuck loading. It was loading. It was stuck in the infinite spinning Pokeball. You know what, Interwebs? I got a treat for you. I'm just going to go ahead and play the clip real quick. Oh my god. Always when I don't have to record button running. Oh my god. I had to reboot my phone because it wasn't dead and it seemed like the people already left. And Back when I was thinking, like, well, if I all these pincers around, if I at least get a shiny pincer, that'd be awesome. That'd make up for any issues I have. Spinning Pokeball game, death. Do this to me. Come on, game. And I'm just gonna throw the ball. Hope for the best. Don't, don't, don't do this to me. Why? I'm gonna run and come back and Oh my god, it better actually be in the ball. Yes! <laughs> that was that was way more stress than I ever wanted to have with a shiny. And to be fair, I think that's the first time that's the closest I've had to an AR plus glitch. But the important thing is I got the shiny. So that is A okay with me. While I talk about other things, maybe I can just quickly showcase exactly how terrible all my luck is with Gengars and that. So, that first half, that first hour could have been better. And I ended up dividing my date as following. I went 
out to the town that I normally walk at, just because I had the hopes of doing a raid at the EX raid. Hoping so that I could at least get the invite. Wild. All the gyms had raids. And lord and behold, the gym, the EX raid gym that never gives out passes. On the one day I was out raiding, didn't pop up a Gengar. Every other gym in the town popped up a Gengar except for the EX gym. So apparently, the one time I was I needed it to not have an EX raid invite go out, it must have popped out an EX raid invite, or it's just a broken gym that doesn't do EX raids anymore. Because I never see people in the chat talk about getting a raid from this particular gym anymore. And salt, 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 salt. If you can't tell all the salt that's pouring from my veins. So what was I getting at? You know, that first hour, the only reason I came up was to do that one gym. Yeah, you saw that ball, right? For those of you listening audio only, pretty sure that ball hit Gengar's feet, which is not in the reticle for catching up Gengar. And yet, that's how I caught the one Gengar of my first hour of Gengar raid day. There's a reason why I didn't want to go all out into car driving. I just didn't realize to the degree of why. Let me pull up some more fun, fun, wonderful, fun ones. Catching adventures with the Gengars. So, I mean, did three Gengars. Only caught one of them. Try to do a, try to two-man the fourth one, because... Apparently, because we were walking from place to place and everyone else was driving, they were already long gone. Disappointing, but I don't regret it, because I was so really... The only thing that made that first hour enjoyable was the fact I was walking. Yeah, like, I resorted to not doing curveballs, and... In case you can't tell, I s got so used to doing curveballs that I just suck at throwing them head-on. That's how I lost all my Gengars. Now, I know I'm ramping out and complain, ranting so much about that first hour of the raid days. But I promise it gets a lot better with the second, or should I say the final hour of raid days. So, I basically went back home after that first hour. There's a town really close by home. So, I actually stopped there and walked around a bit. Got in touch with some people in the, also in that quote-unquote hometown area. And we decided to go around and just do all the gyms that were right in town. Turned out there was a fifth one. They never realized because it was a little out of the way, but still technically within the town. Which was where I found the final field research to get not Spirit Tomb because I caught that last week on the podcast, but Everything else I needed from the quest. And got made me realize that I never had to go out in the first place. I could have just gone out with the, the last two hours of raid date and just did raids around home and use up all my free passes and not waste any premium passes. The good news is all the passes that were wasted were free passes. All the raids I did around the hometown... And on premium passes, I caught every single one of those Gengars. I guess it just makes a huge difference because there was bigger groups, so teams were divided, giving you less ball bonuses. I had no one that I was best friends with in that first hour compared to the last hour where pretty much everyone was best friends if not close. So, pretty much everything after Perfect Soul is a Gengar I caught in the community. So there's those, there's that one that I managed to catch in the first hour. First shiny, I, first Gengar I did in the second hour was a shiny, which is pretty nice. And now that I'm actually looking at it, 
it's very indistinguishable, but I can I can actually tell the difference without the stars. It's bad, but not as bad as I thought. And all three of these other Gengars, I managed to catch. So in total, I did eight raids and caught six Gengars, which ain't so bad in the grand scheme of things. Just made that first hour really stress, frustrating with how the ratio was noticed. You may be wondering what this guy is doing. I said I got six Gengars, but there's a seventh one that has the like psychic moveset. Well, this is a perfect ghastly that I actually caught on one of my breaks a little while ago. Yeah, perfect IVs. So I found out about the event before I could evolve it all the way. So I decided to keep him as a haunter just to see. Because I know the Pokemon Company site said that you could evolve a Haunter and a Gengar during the raid day window, but because it wasn't on the Pokemon Go site, it's a little skeptical. But turns out I was being overly skeptical over nothing. Because now my perfect Gengar has that lick move. Unfortunately, I have to TM Psychic off it in order to make it any use. Oh wow, I got that many rare candies raiding today? Well, I wish I got more charge TNs, but them's the breaks, you know? Let's do this right now and hope that I just get it right away. That is not right away. <sighs> do I dare try again? Oh, I should have known that would happen. I swear, I'm wasting all my charge TMs. This is my last one. If I don't get Shadow Ball... Who oh, think the Lord above? I was about ready to throw a chair at something. <laughs> so that took all my TMs that I got throughout the entire raid day. Yes, all three of them. And I'm pretty sure I had, had one or two TMs before the raid day started. God, they're... Way too stingy with the TMs. Especially when they gave us a charge move that they knew that we would want to TM away. Yeah, but I'm not going to get into the raid salt. So yeah, I think I had a pretty good haul. I was able to evolve my perfect Ghastly into a Gengar with the best moveset possible. Got a bunch more Gengars from Raid Day. Got plenty of rare candies to use up. Got a shiny pincer. Completed my special research. Got a shiny Gengar. What more could I possibly ask for? One of these Gengars I caught even has perfect attack and pretty good IVs overall. It's just unfortunate that I probably won't be using these Gengars for a good while because it's going to take me forever to find more TMs. Oh, hey, Vegeta, I'm going to mispronounce your name because my throat is still a bit dry, so my J's are going to be impossible, but I'll, Nij, Nijvita just asked how many shinies I have in general. Well, let me tell you, Nijvita, I have been playing this game from the first day it came out, and I've been out for a lot of community days, so... Just trust me, don't freak out when you see the screen pop with my shinies. The short answer is I don't know. I lost count. But granted, that pincer is the first shiny outside of a community day that I've caught in a long time. So, and I don't even count the snubble because I got the snubble in the trade. So, if we're not counting trades, community day, or raid days, that Flareon was a trade too, because I evolved way too many Eevees just to get Joltleons and Vaporeons. This guy, this Wingle, was the last shiny that I got. 
before the pincer I just got today. And that was in September. So that was about three months ago. Hopefully that answers your question. And I know I probably don't need to hold on to all the shinies that I got, but I don't see any good reason to get rid of them. Minus some Chikoritas that I've gotten rid of already, because I get the feeling they may help me get some Pokemon, like regionals that I normally wouldn't be able to get, or just nice to have them for the memories of how well I did in community days, little things like that. Plus some shinies are just cool looking. It's worth having them for that. I think that's about all I really got for now. Overall though, point being community day was nice. Or raid day. I wasn't even planning on being out for the whole three hours, but technically I was. How do I manage your Pokemon storage? Well, thing number one, I put a lot of money into storage. I know a lot of people have like the 1500 and still maxed out. But I guess the best thing I can say for managing storage space is try to keep only what you actually use for fighting. Try to hold on to as few unnecessary Pokemon as possible. It involves a lot of black box cleanup. Like, usually comes down... When I don't expand my storage space to an amount that is significantly higher than what I typically keep on average, it, all, it involves a lot of maintenance, like going through here checking the IVs and transferring away Pokemon that I no longer need. So the best thing I can recommend is just... Um, it's hard for me to say this because I don't want people to throw away things that give them memories, but if you can afford to just keep the Pokemon you use for battling and a few memoria, like your favorite shinies, or Pokemon you got from far away, or Pokemon that you're planning to trade, or use for trade negotiation. It all basically boils down to just trying to keep only what you absolutely want and what you absolutely need. And not being shy of the transfer button. I feel like I, when I do clean out my boxes, I feel like I spend way too long cleaning out my boxes, especially when I'm making some serious thoughts like, do I need all these shiny Vaporeons and things like that. I think that's all I really got to go through. I can understand if this seems like a short stream. I was trying to keep it down. Before you go, though, I was thinking of going and doing a raid. Just, like, popping into another chat and saying hi, or I could just use Twitch's automated feature, so if you want to stick around for that, that's fine. For the people listening in audio, though, thank you all for tuning in, and hope to see you for the next one. Like I said, I'll probably do an audio recording of the things I had to skim over during the middle of the week if I can afford the time and I will use my Twitter account to announce when and where that happens. If you're following me on Twitch you get notifications when I'm streaming in general so that's good to keep in mind as well. So take care.